to safely infuse solutions through an elastomeric infusion device. I'll be demonstrating how to hook up, disconnect, and care for the elastomeric infusion pumps, as well as how to monitor your patient and how to optimize infusion accuracy. This is a Baxter Engine elastomeric infusion pump which is a portable, single-use, non-electric, disposable pump. There's a plastic case on the outside that houses the elastomeric non-latex balloon which is inside and this balloon holds the fluid. As the balloon deflates, the fluid is pushed up out of the balloon through a flow restrictor which controls the rate and out into the tubing the pumps are available in a number of different volumes and flow rates. The pharmacy will determine what is the appropriate pump for you to use with your client. This is the lure lock connector that you twist onto the catheter to hold it in place. There's a wing cap on the end that protects the opening of the tubing and stops the flow. We have opted to use elastomerics as they are proven in the literature to enhance patient satisfaction and comfort as they're lightweight and quiet. They also reduce programming errors and simplify infusion processes and in some cases reduce infusion costs. Let's look at how easy it is to hook up and start the pump. So gather your supplies. We have our antiseptic hand gel. We have our filled elastomeric infusion device. We have our saline syringe to flush the catheter, our alcohol pads, gloves, non-sterile, if that's your protocol to use gloves when starting an infusion and, and flushing a catheter. We have tape to secure the device to the skin and our waste pouch to hold the elastomeric infusion pump. Check the patient's label on the infusion pump. You want to make sure that it's the right name, the right drug, and the dose. Check the rate written on the label, as well as the rate that's written on the pump. This one, although it's hidden by the label, says 1.5 ml per hour. You want to make sure that this rate is the same as the rate indicated on the prescription and the physician's order. Check that it is within the expiry date. That will be indicated on the label. Look to make sure that there's no leaking, that there isn't any fluid sitting inside the container. And check, of course, as with any infusion, that the solution is clear, that there's no particles floating inside. Wash your hands as per your protocol. Now you need to flush your catheter to make sure it is working well. Open your saline prefilled syringe, 0.9% sodium chloride is the solution we use. Read the label on the syringe to make sure you have the right solution. So we have normal saline. With this syringe, there is a bit of an air seal. So you need to push up on the plunger until you feel and hear a pop. Remove the cap, making sure you don't touch the junction. Once you've removed your cap, you need to expel the air from the syringe. So put, holding the syringe upright, push on the plunger to expel any air until you see a bubble at the top. It's critical that you do not touch this open end of the syringe. Take your alcohol pad. You now need to scrub the cap on your vascular access device. So of course, when you're scrubbing any type of IV device, you're using friction, and we tend to scrub whatever your protocol is, but you should be scrubbing for 15 to 30 seconds. And I'm not just doing a gentle wipe, I'm scrubbing with friction, making sure I get the flat end as well as the threads on the side. And I'm aware of where that open end of my syringe is so that I'm not contaminating it. Discard your alcohol pad. Allow that alcohol to dry. Typically, we'll wait 15 seconds. Do not blow on the cap. Do not wave your arms to hasten the drying period. A 
attach the saline syringe. Push in and twist to the cap. Open the clamp if it's not opened already. And then you're going to flush your device as per your protocol. Flush your catheter pushing on the plunger of the syringe. As you're pushing on the plunger, you're assessing how easily that fluid is going in. Is there some resistance? That can be an indicator that there's some blockage in the catheter. You need to ensure that you have a patent catheter where your solution is going to flow easily. With another alcohol swab, scrub the cap once again with friction and we're scrubbing for our protocol at least 15 seconds so that we ensure there's no microbes on the end of this cap. If there are, we will be infusing them directly into our patient's bloodstream. Okay, we scrub for 15 seconds. We now need to attach our last American fusion pump to our IV device. So I'm going to uncoil the tubing. I'm going to remove, twist off the winged cap You'll notice I'm holding the cap, ensuring that the, the cleansed end is not touching anything. As well, you want to ensure that you do not touch that open end of this tubing. We now attach the tubing of the Elast American Fusion device to your vascular access device. So I'm going to push and twist clockwise until I feel it firmly and secured. You don't want to over twist it or it can actually crack the hub of your cap. Ensure that the clamps on your catheter, if there are clamps, are open. If there's a clamp on your last American infusion device tubing, make sure you open that clamp. The solution will now automatically start flowing. It's that easy. You then need to secure the tubing so it doesn't get caught. So with a piece of tape, loop up the catheter and place a piece of tape, not on your dressing, to secure it in place. You can also put another piece of tape here if you wanted to to prevent it from being pulled out. And then you simply place the elastomeric device into the waste pouch and secure it to the patient's waist using the belt or you can place it on their bed if they're resting in bed or hang it on the arm of the chair. You do have a responsibility to monitor the infusion of the to make sure that that balloon is deflating or shrinking. You can look at the device to determine if the balloon is shrinking. There are graduated markings on the side of the pump that you can use to assess that your, your infusion is progressing. This is what it looks like when it is full. Here's a pump that has only about a quarter of the infusion remaining. You can see how that balloon has deflated significantly from the original full infusion. And you can also see that the, the bottom of the balloon is resting about here. You'll know the infusion is complete when your reservoir container looks like this, where the balloon is completely deflated and you can actually see the little bumps on the inner tube on the elastomeric device. That means that infusion has completed. There's a few very basic principles to help ensure that the infusion progresses at the appropriate rate. Temperature will affect the rate that the fluid flows. The pump should be at room temperature before hooking it up to the IV catheter. So we recommend that you take the pump out of the fridge ideally six to eight hours before hooking up so that it can come to room temperature. If you start it with the solution cold, the infusion will take longer than expected. Keep the pump close to the bottom. If the patient is going out in the cold, 
Place it under the clothing so it doesn't get cold or it will run slower. You really need to try to avoid extremes in temperature. As we said, cold temperature will slow the rate down. Heat will also increase the rate, so avoid going out in high temperatures. The pump flows most accurately at 21 degrees Celsius. Height will also affect the rate the fluid flows. Once the pump is connected to the catheter, keep the top of the pump as close to the height of the IV device to ensure accuracy of flow rate. If you raise the pump, it will run faster by about 0.5% per 2.5 centimeters. If you lower the pump so it is below the height of the vascular access device, it will run slower. When the patient is sleeping, you can keep it tucked under the pillow. It's important to keep the pump dry. When showering or bathing, place the pump on a chair outside the tub or the shower so it doesn't get wet. Keep the pump in the carrying case that it comes with. This will help protect the pump. You want to make sure it isn't dropped or that it hits something. They should be protected from light and out of reach of children and pets. Mm -hmm. You need to store the filled pumps in a refrigerator until ready for use. When the infusion is complete, you need to disconnect the pump. So remove the pump from the pouch. Look at the device to make sure that that balloon has fully de deflated. If it was only scheduled to run for a half hour, but there's still solution in the balloon, don't disconnect it yet. Wait until that balloon is fully deflated and you can see those bumps on the inside of the balloon. The first thing you're going to do to disconnect the pump is wash your hands. Put gloves on if that's your policy. If there's a slide clamp on the tubing, you would close the slide clamp. So I'm just going to remove this piece of tape. I'm going to close the clamp on my vascular access device by squeezing this. Disconnect the pump by twisting the end of the tubing, that's this white portion, from the cap. So I have my one hand on the cap and the other on the connector and I twist counterclockwise, twist the end of the tubing to remove it from your IV. Dispose the pump as per your protocol, you now need to flush your catheter. So you're going to open your alcohol pad, scrub the end of the cap, again scrubbing with friction for 15 seconds. Open your pre-filled syringe. So you need to release that air seal. So I'm pushing on the plunger until I hear a pop. I remove the cap from the syringe, ensuring that I do not touch the open end of the syringe. Push on the plunger to expel any air until you see a bubble of fluid at the top. Insert your syringe into your cap with a push and then a twist to lock it on. Open your clamp and then you're going to flush your catheter. In this region, we use a push-stop flush, where you push, stop, push, stop, push, stop, until you get to the end of the syringe. You then twist the syringe off by turning it counterclockwise. Some tips for troubleshooting. Do not use the pump if it's past the expiry date on the label. If the patient label on the device is incorrect, if the balloon splits or bursts, if there's signs of leakage inside or on the outside of the device, if the blue wing cap is missing when you're starting the infusion, if the balloon bursts or leaks, you simply close the clamp on the catheter if there is one, disconnect the tubing from the vascular access device, flush and lock the catheter as per policy, and notify medical pharmacy about the leakage. If your infusion is running slowly, the balloon has not deflated at the rate that you thought it would, 
Remember, first of all, it does deflate slowly, but there's a couple of tricks to check. Ensure that the device was not exposed to cool temperatures. If the temperature is cool, ask the patient to keep the device close to their body. Ensure that the device is at the same height as the connection. So the top of the device should be similar height to this connection. You can apply warm compresses on the catheter site, not getting your dressing wet, if the device is infusing slowly. And observe the elastomeric reservoir over a couple of minutes to determine if it's infusing. You can inspect the catheter and the tubing to make sure there's no kinking. You can also consider disconnecting the tubing from the device. Try flushing the device with saline to see if you have a patent catheter. Or is this infusing slowly because there's perhaps a blockage inside your vascular access device? You can also disconnect the tubing from the IV device and watch to see if there's a drop of fluid. Remember, this may take several seconds depending on the rate of the pump. But watch and see if you do get a drop of fluid. That will indicate that the device is functioning properly, the pump is but the problem is more likely with the vascular access device. If the solution is running too fast, as the balloon is deflating faster than you expected, ensure that the device is not exposed to high temperatures, it's not near a heat source or in the sunlight. Assess your patient for an elevated temperature. If they have a fever, their body temperature is higher and this pump is more likely to infuse faster. And again, make sure that the device is at the same height as the vascular access device. If the pump is elevated, it will run faster. Successful outcomes are also dependent upon the resident's care of his or her line. The nurse must educate the resident and or family member to understand the role they play in managing the pump. For instance, to make sure that the pump stays dry, that it remains protected, for instance, it doesn't get dropped, that the tubing doesn't get caught when moving about, where to place the pump when lying in bed, and perhaps you may uh, ask the resident, if appropriate, to notify the nurse when the balloon reservoir is deflated so that the nurse can disconnect it. A final reminder of tips for success. Make sure that you take the pump out of the fridge to allow the solution to come to room temperature so it infuses at the proper rate. Make sure you've checked your catheter, flushed it with saline to make sure that it remains patent. And try and keep the top of the pump at about the same height as the lure lock connector and catheter. And this concludes our program. We hope that this review provides you with both the knowledge and skills required to care for this elastomeric intermate infusion device as you strive to deliver excellence of care in infusion therapy. At Medical Pharmacies and OMS, we are committed to facilitating continuing education with the common goal of optimizing nursing and patient outcomes. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us at Medical Pharmacies.